Hi, Dick Jr. Coming to you today with uh, Jeremiah chapter 9. Um, let's see, I wrote down one reference. Let's see, Micah. And then I know that I had another one. So if you just give me a second, I can write it down real quick. That was uh, Ecclesiastes. So uh, let me write this down real quick. And we'll get on with this. Um, the first one is Micah. Uh, chapter 6 verse 12 chapter 6 verse 12 of Micah the next one is Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 that's chapter 9 verse 11 of Ecclesiastes um, I've already prayed and asked God to help me speak with you today to read and uh, I suggest anytime that you place yourself in his word that you go to God and you pray and you ask him to help you as well um, so I really like this chapter in Jeremiah you'll hear as I read it and I've read I there's a lot of things in here that really get my mind and my heart thinking and, and a lot of places that I could take us in scripture that would compare to things in this chapter, but that's kind of out of the scope of what I'm doing here. I'm just reading mostly. So, and I just wanted to take these two references because I, I especially like uh, uh, Ecclesiastes and Micah, any prophet for the matter of that. I like all the prophets. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get started here in uh, verse one of chapter nine. Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people, Jerusalem. Oh, that I had in the desert a wayfarer's lodging place, that I might leave my people and go from them. For all of them are adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. And that was a place where you could leave uh, someone and come back and get them later um, out in the wilderness. Uh, let's see all desert place and my people go from them for all of them are adulterers an assembly of treacherous men and he's not strictly talking about adultery in a sexual manner he's talking about uh, adulterous behavior cheating on God with another God basically would be the way that I could say it and make it sound right um, so uh, let me go on here. An assembly of treacherous men, right? Verse 3. They bend their tongue like the bow and lie and not... And lie. lie okay, sorry. Lies and not truth prevail in the land. For they proceed from evil to evil. And they do not know me, declares the Lord. Let everyone be on guard against his neighbor and do not trust any brother. Because every brother deals craftily and every neighbor goes about a slanderer. And that's reminds me of the days that we live in right now uh, in a lot of ways um so here we are in verse five everyone deceives his neighbor and does not speak the truth they have taught their tongue to speak lies they weary themselves committing iniquity and again i feel like this is the days that we live in today and at this time we're going to take the reference to micah chapter 6 verse 12 uh, micah chapter 6 verse 12 um 6, 12. For the rich men of the city are full of violence. Her residents speak lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. And he's kind of explaining it. But for some reason, I wrote Zion next to that. And I think maybe he's talking about also the, the people of the church at that time. You know what I mean? So that's anyway, that's, that's Micah. And uh, that's their reference, not mine. So... Um, so verse 6, your dwelling is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, declares the Lord. Again with the refuse, not just knowing him, but refusing to know him, which is an action. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, I will refine them and assay them. To assay something is to test the metal to see what it's made of, what kind of alloy it is, and also uh, refining. For what else can I do because of the daughter of my people? Their tongue is a deadly arrow. And I think the daughter of his people, he's talking about uh, Zion and, and Jerusalem and these people that are dying because of their own iniquities. But yeah, uh, their tongue is a deadly arrow. It speaks deceit. With his mouth, one speaks peace to his neighbor, but inwardly he sets an ambush for him. And this is the days we live in. I, I just feel that way. Shall I not punish them for these things, declares the Lord. That's a kind of a general statement. He's talking about something specific here, yes, but 
you know, also, should he not punish you if you commit these things? See what I mean? Uh, shall I not punish them for these things, declares the Lord? On a nation such as this, shall I not avenge myself? So on a nation such as this, shall he not avenge himself? He's talking about the nation of Israel. But he could be talking about a nation such as this. You see what I mean? Uh, for the mountains I will take up a weeping and wailing, and for the pastures of the wilderness a dirge, because they are laid waste so that no one passes through, and the lowing of the cattle is not heard. Both the birds of the sky and the beasts have fled. They are gone. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a haunt of jackals. I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without inhabitant. Who is the wise man that may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken, that he may declare it? Why is the land ruined, laid waste like a desert, so that no one passes through? The Lord said, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, nor walked according to it. And here we are again, not obeyed my voice. Listen to God. But they walked after the stubbornness of their heart, which is what we do. We do what we want to do. you know. And after the Baals, as their fathers taught them, which at that time they were worshiping idols. But we kind of worship idols ourselves, you know, our cars, our houses, our money, or whatever it is. But, um, you know, our fathers taught us to do this as well. I will scatter them among the nations whom neither they nor their fathers have known. And I will send the sword after them until I have annihilated them. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider and call for the mourning women that they may come. They used to have professional mourners back then. You would pay them and they would come and cry at your funeral or at someone's funeral. Uh, and send for the wailing women that they may come. Let them make haste and take up a wailing for us that our eyes may shed tears and our eyelids flow with water. And if you get the wailing women going, then you're going to get going. And you can cry without worrying that people hear you cry because there's women around wailing for a voice of wailing is heard from Zion. And again, we're here at Zion. And I told you that my reference, my, their reference to Micah had my word Zion written next to it. Uh, how are we ruined? We are put to great shame for we have left the land because they have made cast down their dwe our dwellings. Now hear the word of the Lord. O you women and let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Teach your daughters wailing, and every one her neighbor a dirge. For death has come upon, for death has come up through our windows. It has entered our palaces and cut off the children from the streets, the young men from the town squares. He was also talking about the fact that uh, that uh, Jerusalem and Israel and Judah were all being taken over by uh, Nebuchadnezzar, in one form or another, uh, at, because God wanted Nebuchadnezzar to do this. You see. Uh, Speak thus, says the Lord, the corpses of men will fall like dung on the open field and like the sheaf after the reaper, but no one will gather them. Thus says the Lord, let not a wise man boast of his wisdom and let, let not the mighty man boast of his might. Let not a rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts boast of this, that he understands and knows me. And that's God right there, that you understand and know God. You want to be a wise man, a rich man, all these things, no God. You'll get there. That I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. So anytime that you have anything that is loving kindness, righteousness, and justice, okay, there's no wickedness, no deceitfulness in it. If something happens, God is loving kindness, justice, and righteousness. You see what I mean? Here on earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. And that's what the Lord delights in. He does not delight in calamity. He does not delight in meanness. He delights in loving kindness, justice, and righteousness. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, that I will punish all who are circumcised and yet uncircumcised. And what he's talking about is our hearts. We'll go on to here to hear about that. Egypt and Judah and Edom and the sons of Ammon and Moab and all those inhabiting the desert who clip the hair on their temples. For all the nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised of heart. And what he was saying is all the nations are uncircumcised, Egypt, Judah, Edom, Ammon, 
all those nations were uncircumcised at that time because only the Jewish people did circumcision, as far as I know, at least in this area. So, um, and Israel was circumcised, but they weren't. And that's what he was talking about up here, that I will punish all who are circumcised and yet uncircumcised. So they had circumcised their parts, you know, according to their tradition, uh, but their heart was not God's. See, I mean, they cut the flesh and said, I'm God's, but they didn't change their heart and give it over to God. And that was the problem. So uh, that's Jeremiah chapter nine. Thanks for listening and uh, God bless.